Yo, hello, and welcome to Brand News, where hip-hop has a new direction. I'm your host, Christopher Martin, and this is the BNZ World Report News and Reviews, where we share just four of the many great stories reported last week in our News to Know section at brandnews.com about individuals and events making a difference around the world and even up the street. So without any further delay, let's check out our first story. Our first story comes from Lancaster Online and it reads, Lancaster teen Tamar Boggs hailed as a hero in a five-year-old's abduction. Tamar Boggs, who is a McCaskey freshman, had an idea that he can be of some help to find this young lady and the rest is positive history. This is how it went down. We were um, helping an old lady move a couch and so then um, a guy came around the corner asking to if he saw like, the little missing girl and we said no because we didn't see her. So we went back into the house and um, we were watching TV for a little and his Kane's mother came and said that there was a bunch of cops outside looking for a little girl and so we should go look for her. And, and so then we got like a, like a whole bunch of my friends that I know like around Lancaster Arms and Lancaster Green to go search for her and we walked a pretty good amount of distance to look for her, like back in the woods and where they said she could have been gone. And so then we came back and we couldn't find her. So we came back and uh, the whole block was filled with cops and firefighters. And so then I was sitting on Joseph's bike, which was the boy you saw me with, uh, his bike. And I had a feeling in my stomach that I was gonna find her. And so then Chris was with, Chris had a bike too. so. I was going and said he was going to come. I said, okay, go, come with me. And so then I went over back there uh, in, in a general area that we were before, but I just went a little more deeper over there. And so I saw this like suspicious car and I looked into the passenger seat. It was a little girl. And I said, I think that's her. And so we cha we followed it for about five minutes and then we noticed that it was the, it was her. And so we chased it for like 15 minutes, chased the car for 15 minutes around like Gable Park in that area. Like, down those like little streets, uh, and so then he went down Gable Park Road. Oh, I chased him going down that hill, and he turned around. And I guess he got scared or offended or just scared that um, we were chasing him. And so then he let her out, and she got out. She like stood there for a little, and then she ran at me. she ran to me and said she needed a, her mommy. And so then I put her on my shoulders because I had the bike. I put her on my shoulders and rid the bike halfway. And then I noticed that it was too dangerous to ride like that. And so then I carried her for the past couple meters that I had of getting her to a law enforcement or her parents. And so they took her and, well, at first she didn't want to leave my arms because she was scared that they were going to do something to her. So I said, no, they're not going to do anything. They're going to take it to your mom. And she said, okay. And she went with that. Our next story comes from Clutch Magazine and it reads, 16-year-old Wonder Girl produces new song on Jay-Z's Magna Carta, Holy Grail. While producing a track for Jay-Z is an artist's dream come true, Asherende's story is even more awesome than that. Check this out. Hey, what's up? Follow me upstairs. Welcome to the home of Jay-Z's newest discovery, Ebony Asherende, the producer who goes by the name Wonder Girl and put her beats into Jay-Z's hands. The idea is to really finish the album and drop it. Great. Beautiful. Giving it to the world at one time and then letting them share it. Now the world is hearing the beats mixed by a young girl who started when she was nine, inspired by a video of hip-hop producer Timbaland. One. This video with Jay Z and him in the studio, and uh, I was just amazed. I was like, I want to, I want to do what Timbaland does. And she did, learning how to make music from videos on YouTube. In her early teens, she started entering beat making contests, winning the second time she entered. Just, you got to make a decision now. One, two, three. One. 
This is our, our walk of fame. This is our DJ Agile worked with Asha Rinde as a mentor at the talent incubator, the Remix Project. Even at his first meeting, he realized she was set. So when she believes something and she's like, this is the way it should be, this is what's right, this is what I hear, she'll put her foot down and like stand her ground. So how did this bedroom mix master get on Jay-Z's new album? She sent a track to Houston rapper Travis Scott. A few days after, he messaged me and said, I'm about to change your life. Then yeah, I, I she got the call. He called me, actually, and said, you're on Jay-Z's album. Like, congratulations. And what did you say? I don't know. It, like, I was, I was so, I don't know. It, I felt like crying. And Asha Rinde is hoping her success will open doors for others. You can do anything that you want, basically. It, not even in music. Anything that is male-dominated, you can do it. Like, just try and with a trip to L.A. next week, it's obvious this Wonder Girl is just getting started. What's next for Wonder Girl? I want to win a Grammy. Mm. That's it. Now it's time for a special Team B&Z report coming from our friend, Jay Sweet, as he hangs out at Fade's Barbershop for another segment of A Little Off The Top. What's up, Jay? Yo, this is Jay Sweet with Team BNZ. We're giving you a little off the top this morning. We're about to walk into Fade's Barbershop and see exactly what they feel about the George Zimmerman case. We are waiting on the verdict, people. We're waiting on the verdict. Let's see what everybody has to talk about. Like he Let was me just the fist. How it went down, my man. He got out of the car, followed Trayvon. Zimmerman got out of his car with the gun in his hand. When he confronted Trayvon, they got into a little argument. Follow Trayvon. When he got up on Trayvon, he was running. He got tired of running. Just like I get tired of somebody running behind me, I ain't running no more. Got into a tough. Trayvon made it. Caught it with a left. Then that's when the fight started. He went down. Once he went for the gun, Zimmerman had the gun, screaming and hollering. Trayvon went to holler for help. Bam! Up to the side went down. The man walked up to him, shot him, and that was it. Tell me this, how he got the gun from behind his back, laying on his back? They were going for that gun, man. I'm just saying, Ty, if, if, if you got a gun in your back, and I'm going to pop you. How you get it? How you get it? He couldn't get it. I'm trying to tell you, he had to go out. I think all that was made up, man. I don't even think they got in the scope. I think he just shot that boy. He just shot and, and then they did all that foolish defense. The police in Sanford had something to do with it. And this man was beating this man yeah. head. It had been, been He'll have a concussion. Yeah, he will have a concussion. You know, you know, that looked like a flashlight pick in the back of his head. So he could have got the flashlight and beat it on some side of the head. Do y'all really feel like Zimmerman gonna get off? No, he ain't getting off. If, if, if he get free, I just don't know where he gonna stay. Where he gonna go? He gonna go out to eat? He can't even go to McDonald's. Everybody can go to McDonald's. That's in the Constitution. My name Mike. If they don't find that white man guilty, free rights to go to McDonald's whenever you want to. Unless you Zimmerman or Case Andy. I'm taking the ball from the barber shop down there. That nigga gonna have to have uh, Barack Obama uh, service. Get up on the tree. Rooftop with some scope, and we're gonna make justice happen. Yeah, I ain't going to say, but don't be right here cutting out. Y'all gonna forget about it. He gonna probably get like a like a little slap in the face. He's gonna get less than 10 years. I'm supposed to sue this man. Ain't no way you heard they're gonna get that man no 10 years, man, for murdering that black man. I don't be getting 50 years. A revolution. Kill the cold blood, man. They didn't make it seem like that in court, though. The closing arguments they did. But nobody there for Zimmerman in Trayvon. You got one man there, and it wouldn't be like that had he not got out of that club. They sent Michael Vick to prison for a fighting dog. They let this man off. That means they respect dogs more than they do black people. When you come out of that courtroom, we gonna be, that's the last time y'all gonna hear from it. That means the jury gotta come out and say guilty or something. Yeah. I don't see that. He got out of this truck. This man, he's a wannabe cop that took it too far. Follow the ball like an animal and kill him. He's a neighborhood watch, he know the rules. He took the law into his own hands. Y'all think, think Oprah gonna interview is oh, yeah. it? Too I get my own interview. Oh yeah, Oprah have him on the show. <laughs> hey, Mr. Zimmerman, how do it feel to be a black kid killer? <laughs> what did you do? How it feel to be free after all that killing? Whether he going to jail or not, right. Oprah gonna Oprah interview gonna have him on the show. <laughs> Most and then what kills me about the whole situation? Every time something 
go on. Guess who they blame for it? Who that? Obama. I was talking to a white dude up there on my job. He said every time something go on, it's Obama. What do you got to do with this trial? I actually think he's gonna get off, man. Man, I think he's gonna get off, man. Alright, okay, okay. Who was like, I'm gonna take the law into my own hands. Best thing for you to do is just leave the law. The police said I'm gonna shoot nothing if I drop it. Now he can kill the black man and get off, but if you do something to him, you going to prison. There's some laws with bombs down there in Tampa. Bottom line, he's going to prison. He's going to be held accountable for what he did. He killed him in cold blood. Don't tell the rest of that. But I think what they said is we did what we had to do, and we just have to trust that the system's going to work and just pay. And I, I know that it's easier said than done, and that's why I think then they walk away quickly and let the law students then talk to him because, you know, it's the most...